Well, and tonight I am joined by the independent activist filmmaker who went undercover into those Acorn offices, James O'Keefe. Now his work is being featured on BigGovernment.com. And also with us is Hannah Giles, who portrayed the prostitute in those videos. And she is also with BigGovernment.com. Guys, welcome, welcome to the program. Uh, for, I got to give you both a lot of credit. You know, where, where's 60 Minutes? Where's 2020? Where's, where's investigative journalism? Tell us how you came up with this idea and how it all got started. Well, my friend Hannah messaged me on Facebook and suggested, and we're both activists, we've both done a lot of activism in the past, and she suggested just, she was walking by an acorn one day and she said, what if I went in dressed as a prostitute? And she messaged me this and I said, well, I could be a pimp. And uh, we took it from there, we, we created the situation as ridiculous as we possibly could. We came up with the underage girls and... Uh, yeah, uh, and this is it. All right, Hannah, let me, let me start with you. So it's really your idea... Uh, to bring this to light, why don't you walk us through, you know, you walk by these offices, you come up with the idea, um, I, was it hard to play a prostitute? But tell us how, how it all came together. Well, Sean, it's amazing what girls think about when they're jogging, and um, that was just something that popped into my head. I had never seen an acorn office. I really didn't even know that they existed, and I jogged into the wrong part of town, saw some homeless people and street ladies, and... Um, put two and two together when I turned around to get back into a safe neighborhood and um, it's like what if these people went into Acorn you know a prostitute and what would come from that no no bills no nothing would they get a house could they start a business well, so we put it to the test well and and obviously and you both have come under fierce criticism uh, uh, for this I want you to walk us through, because I'll tell you, beyond the tax evasion part of this and the law breaking and the assistance and the fact, you went in great specificity and detail. Let's start in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. you, said, you, you said this is a business that services male clients that uses condoms. Mm -hmm. Walk us through just how specific you were that this was a, and, and would import young teenage girls from El Salvador. Basically, we went in and we just started out with the sim you know, simplistics. I'm, I'm, I would, my girlfriend's a prostitute. And then when they said, that's okay, I took it to the next level. And I said, well, you know, I know other prostitutes. And I took it to the next level and they're trafficked in from you know, El Salvador. I just you know, took it, it. When they kept saying yes, I kept getting more ridiculous and more ridiculous. And it just escalated from there. And, and you don't think they had any clue that this, you know, the, so you think this is almost standard operating procedure because they help people with their taxes. Yeah, they had absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. At no point in my talking to them did they stop me or did it occur to them that there was any morality involved. They just, just kept on going Not at along. One point. Business as usual. All right, Hannah, because Hannah, you were playing the, the prostitute here. And, mm -hmm. you know, look, I, whenever somebody gets into the, the trafficking of young children, any human being with a soul, alarm bells are going to go off in their head and say, whoa, you know, you, this is the business you're in? But all they did was offer assistance. So as you're going through this in Baltimore, you know, what's going through your mind at the time? Um, first of all, it was, I could not believe it. How can a woman who's most likely a mother, even maybe a grandmother, be okay, not even phased with the fact that underage girls are going to be smuggled into the country to be used for a sex business. Yeah, and as the answers were coming in, I mean, did you, did you find your mind spinning and saying to yourself, Hannah, that I, I, it's almost inconceivable that a human being could react this way? Because that was my reaction. I'm sitting there saying, anyone ever said this to me, I'm calling the police that second, and I'm telling yeah. them to get out of my office. So Well, when, when we saw them you know not phased by one thing we were like wow I wonder what else we could get and that's what James was saying we pushed and we pushed and we got everything that we asked for as yep. you know a fake pimp and prostitute and what do you think of, of those people that are say oh no this has been a setup this is unfair that they did fire them and the US Census Bureau did you know cut their ties with them today what's your mm -hmm. reaction to that I think it's great. Um, I think that this is this is like you said, standard operating procedure. These people, the, the 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 trap was preset. This is who these people are. We're exposing their soul. We're, we're we're getting to the heart of who they actually are. It's not just some manipulation. It's not entrapment. I'm not an, an agent of the government. I'm just going in as a concerned young citizen of this country, uh, just showing. 
people what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah, all right. The type of business or service you provide, let me make sure there's a code for it, okay? A code for prostitution? Well, yeah, because we, we have to ha I have to have a name and a code number. Well, I don't know if there's going to be a code. But I'm going to look in there. I'm going to get my list. Okay. She's going to sell say she's good. And then we can get the right tax code. Yes. So that's wonderful. Your business is a performing artist. A performing artist. But you are. Okay? So okay. you're not lying. That's kind of we'll play on my work, ego. <laughs> but you're a performing but, artist. Yeah. All right. Okay? okay? So stop saying plastic. Got it. All right, now that same official for Acorn, who has since been fired by that organization, went even further to help the woman posing as a prostitute. Let's take a look. You have to have a certain clothing. Okay, so we can write that off. You have to have a certain grooming. Okay, that can be written off. Um, do you provide, do you get like little gifts or like uh, some kind of incentive or something to your clients or whatever? You can write stuff well, like that. I mean, condoms. I mean, how many condoms travel, did you buy last month? No. You don't travel. They travel to her. Yeah. Right. They so you don't, you don't go nowhere, right? Okay. So yeah, we could probably write off. You made $9,000. We can write off at the, probably at least seven. I am rejoined by the filmmaker behind all of this video, James O'Keefe and Hannah Giles, who portrayed the hot prostitute. By the way, uh, I'm so, did I call you a prostitute, Hannah? I meant performing artist. Um, I, I apologize for that. Excuse me. Um, yeah. <laughs> did, now, did that shock you as much as, by the way, you get to write off your hooker boots and your condoms, that, according to yeah, the Acorn official. They're so kind. <laughs> I, uh, when I heard that, you know... I, I, that shocks the conscience. That shocks the conscience. But I got to tell you, it's the yeah. underage thing. In both instances, it comes up here that you were not mm -hmm. shy about saying this is about the importation of young underage girls for the purpose of prostitution. There was no ambiguity. It really comes out of the uh, the playbook from Saul Alinsky, who is a community organizer, and he wrote one of his chapters something about using their rules against them. So this is really just the application of, of community organizer Saul Alinsky against the community organizers. Now you came out; these came out in two separate days. Is there any more mm -hmm. tapes to come? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. May well, Hannah? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. There. I think we'll get there. All right. Here's my question. I'll throw this to you, Hannah, first. We now, John Boehner's office did a study, Acorn Affiliates in 11 states got $31 million in uh, federal funds, and it goes, we can go through the entire list. We know that, you know, Acorn founded in 1970, they've received over $53 million in federal funds that have been pumped into Acorn. Under the Obama administration, Obama, uh, Acorn stands to receive a whopping $8.5 billion in available stimulus funds. Now, mm -hmm. Hannah, you were in their offices, you met the people, you heard what they said, you see their, their seeming willingness to go along with an underage prostitution ring. When you hear those numbers, that's, that's taxpayer money. What is your reaction to that? First of all, wouldn't, I mean, what I thought about, you know, our money, would I like a prostitution ring with underage girls in my neighborhood? No. With my money, would I like to support that? No. Um, so that kind of frustrated me and I think the corruption is deep set. I think it goes beyond voter fraud and um, smuggling in underage girls for sex rings. Yeah. Well, I, I, and, and was, I'll ask you the same question. I think that what struck me was when I visited those two offices, they're just part-time receptionists. There was one or two employees there that run the facility. You know, houses, halfway houses that, you know, it looks like you can just pick up shop and move elsewhere. Where is all the millions of billions of dollars? Like, where is the money going? I mean, these places were almost so run down. I don't understand where the money is going. Yeah, you, 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 it, well, uh, it's a great question. And, I, and one, I think that we need a full-fledged congressional investigation uh, into, and I wonder if that will come now as a result of, of your tapes. Hopefully. Has any, have any Congress, so. has, has anybody contacted either one of you? No, no politician has contacted me, but I've seen on the news uh, various uh, people in Congress coming out saying they were interested in investigating. Yeah. Hannah, you said to me earlier that, that you had been walking by this office and that you came up with this idea and you called your friend and said, hey, you want to be the pimp? I'll be the, the prostitute here. You know, what did you know about ACORN that, that made you think that there might be something untoward going on uh, here? All I really knew about ACORN at the time was the voter fraud during the election, you know, registering Mickey Mouse and, and 
different people at grave sites. Um, but I saw the Acorn housing. That was specific to that office. The, the one in Washington, D.C. is an, a headquarters of Acorn. And um, it just kind of it, it spurred my curiosity. I came up with the idea, and then I did some research on the housing to see if it would be even possible for us to get, get away with this. Let me ask this. you this. In that experience, and I'll ask both of you first, I'll ask you first, what was the worst thing you think you learned here? That they were willing to aid and abed corrupt people who wanted to harm children. Uh, they're, they're soulless people. They don't believe in anything. They just believe in change for its own sake. All right, guys, uh, I got to tell you, this is a great service. Whatever heat either one of you come under, I got to let you know there are a lot of Americans out here that really appreciate your willingness. You're 25 years old, Hannah, you're 20? Yes, sir. You know, uh, it's amazing, a generation coming up, uh, standing for the truth and doing great investigative journalism. I've often said journalism is dead. You guys are bringing it back to life. Good job, thank, thank you, you both.